What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Stock Bros Podcast. My name is Tony. So today we're going to talk about money, inflation, and rising interest rates and how it all ties together. But first, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment, and let me know if you have any questions. And if there's anything that you don't understand, I'll try to help and answer them as soon as I can. All right, so let's get into it. What is money? So money makes the world go around, right? Well, well, you have all different kinds or forms of money. You have commodities, you have currencies, and these are used to buy, sell, or exchange a product or a service. Now, money can be in the form of a commodity like silver or gold or oil, or it can be a currency like the US dollar, euro, or the British pound, etc. It's a lot of different things it can be. Every country has their own currency. Now, we used to use precious metals to determine the value of a currency. What do I mean by that? Well, the gold standard is a really good example. Historically, <clears throat> governments would actually create or mint coins out of valuable physical commodities and precious metals such as gold and silver. It's not ideal to be carrying bars of gold and silver around with you everywhere you go and have your pockets lined with hundreds of dollars worth of coins because we've all know what it's like to have a couple dollars or quarters in your pocket and it's definitely very uncomfortable. So obviously there was a way around this and the way around this was the government would create paper money. So for instance, dollar bills. Dollar bills are used to actually, what a dollar bill was, it was basically just a voucher. And this would represent the value of the gold or silver that they had available in a bank or a vault. And um, basically what this all means is when a currency is actually determined by how much physical gold or silver is available, it's more stable because there's a limited supply of it. It's scarce. And if you need money, you can't just go and create more dollar bills to, ma to match gold or silver that they don't actually have. So it's harder to get out of a recession. And it's when there's bad economic situations that arise, you can't just create more money because you actually need to have the supply of physical gold to match the paper money. So we are no longer on the gold standard because of this factor. Now today we use, along with most of the world, is we use something called the fiat currency. In the 1970s, the US converted from the gold standard to the fiat currency. And fiat currencies became popular in the 20th century. And why they became popular is because most banks and governments wanted to try to protect their economies from recessions, inflations, liquid liquidity problems, credit problems, etc. The list goes on and on. Now, since fiat money is not scarce or based on a fixed resource like gold or silver, uh, central banks and governments actually have more control over the supply, which gives them power to manage economic variables like credit supplies, liquidity, interest rates, and another really important term, money velocity. Money velocity means how much money is actually in circulation in the actual economy. Now, this is where the Federal Reserve actually comes into play. And we keep hearing a lot about them on TV, and I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit, a little bit later on. So the Fed, as we know them, the Fed, or the Federal Reserve, was actually created in 1913 to serve as a central banking system for the United States. Now, their purpose is to keep currency stable, and they have a couple different jobs, and they're tasked with keeping unemployment low, regulating banks, keeping the U.S. dollar strong, and one of the other important factors is keeping inflation low. 
Now, that brings us to inflation and rising interest rates. Inflation is something, and rising interest rates, we hear a lot about today. Well, let's talk about what inflation is. Inflation, on average, has been around 2% per year for decades now. It's gone up 2% per year for decades now. So what does this mean? Well, this means that every dollar you have sitting in a bank account loses 2% of its purchasing power every year. So a good example is, if you have $100 sitting in a bank, a bank account today, a year from now, it's still $100. So your money is not going down, but you're actually losing purchasing power with that same $100. So that $100 today, a year from now, is going to be worth $98 in terms of purchasing power. So that cup of coffee that costs you a dollar tomorrow at Dunkin' Donuts is going to cost you a dollar and two cents next year at Dunkin' Donuts. That's just how inflation works. So even though you still have the same amount of money in your account, it costs more to purchase the same items and products a year later. So this is why it makes a lot of sense to have your money invested in high interest savings accounts or in the stock market or anything really, bonds, because uh, even CDs, because it's not very hard to get 2% interest on your money. So there's a lot of different avenues you can go down. So that's how inflation works. Now, interest rates. Interest rates in general are just the amount you have to pay back when you take out a loan. And it's how much extra you're going to have to pay on top of that loan to a lender. So uh, in general, when interest rates are low, the economy grows and inflation increases. So the more people that can borrow money at little to no interest rate, there's going to be more money in circulation and that devalues the dollar. I know a lot of people that went and refinanced their houses or refinanced their car loans or took out some small business loans, even buying houses right now, because when interest rates are actually zero, what they are now in a lot of places, or they have been for a while, you can't get any lower than that. Basically, you're getting free money. I mean, you take out a loan for $1,000 and you just pay back the $1,000. There's no interest on it. So that's pretty a very rare situation. And very rare does that actually happen. So that's when interest rates are low. There's a lot of money in circulation. There's a lot more loans being taken out. The, the purchasing power of your dollar is actually devalued. A really good example of that is if you're trying to buy a house and was looking at buying houses recently and you know you look at a two hundred thousand dollar house with a no very low interest rate, but the problem is they're actually a hot commodity right now. Everybody wants to try to buy a house right now because they need low interest rates. And because of that, house values are actually skyrocketing. So a two hundred thousand dollar house, is now being sold for $220,000. So that's what happens when you have inflation. Now, when interest rates are high, on the other hand, when interest rates are high, the economy slows and inflation decreases. So less people taking out loans, there's more people that are saving their money, there's not as much money velocity, money being circulated in the economy. So when that happens, inflation actually goes down because people aren't buying as many products and commodities or whatever. So the prices are actually dropped. And one reason why we talk about the Federal Reserve, uh, the media talks about the Federal Reserve and we see them in the in online and Google. If you go in Google News, it's all you see every day. The Fed says this, the Fed chairman says that. Well, the reason why we're always talking about the Federal Reserve and we're waiting for them to talk at two o'clock on every Thursday of the month or whatever it is, is because the Federal Reserve establishes interest rate targets intended to keep the economy in balance. So by moving interest rate targets up or down, the, fret, the Federal Reserve actually attempts to achieve a target unemployment rate, stable prices, stable economic growth 
and the Fed will actually raise interest rates to reduce inflation and decrease the rate to the, the interest rates to help uh, jumpstart economic growth. So that's why the Federal Reserve is really important. And that's one of their uh, most important aspects of their job is to try to keep the economy stable. And they do that via interest rates, via um, uh, bond yields, and many other factors, many, many other factors. And they also try to keep inflation in check. So hope that's the most simple, simplistic breakdown of money, interest rates, and inflation that I can possibly give. So if that helps, let me know. Uh, if there's still anything you don't understand, please feel free to ask. Leave a comment below, and let me know. And don't forget to use my referral links for Acorns. Um, I also have one for public. It's a really great app if you wanna buy fractional shares of ETFs and stocks, because a lot of brokerages don't allow fractional share purchasing. And uh, Acorns, like I said before, Acorns is a great way to save money. Every time you buy something, it rounds up the purchase price and invests the nearest hold, whole dollar. So if you're buying something for $250, it will round it up to $3 and invest it into the stock market for you. And also another great way to invest right now, or a great commodity, if we're going to talk about money, great commodity is Bitcoin. And uh, you can use my link for Coinbase to buy some Bitcoin. And um, hopefully that helps. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it.